former members in a documentary speak out about David Platt. I think David Platt is weak. I think that David Platt is a coward. He is a false teacher. He is a wolf. Uh, he is a liar. We'd been lied to from the pulpit. We were lied to from David Platt. No doubt about it, he's in it for the money. But let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology, we chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hallowed be, cause this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace, welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K Dub. Today, we're gonna get right into it. David Platt. There's a documentary coming out where former members are speaking out on some of the things that would happen in the church. Uh, I, man, this, the documentary is supposed to come out later this year, so we will see. But I have a question. What is going on with at his church? It's, man, if, if these allegations are true, which I mean, there's quite a few members who are speaking out, confirming a lot of this. Uh, it, man, it's not good for David Platt. I remember David Platt when, early in my reformed years man i read his book radical thought it was excellent and there seems to be a lot of good stuff but over the past years i've seen some troubling stuff but they actually go in further on some of these things so actually let's get into it hi i'm david platt and i want to tell you about a new initiative in radical called urgent david platt how much time do you have <laughs> He's a very charismatic guy. If he was running for office, the first time you meet him, you feel like you want to vote for him like right away. When David Platt came to the church, I didn't know much about him. Well, at first, I really liked him. I mean, he was so personable. Very good at question deflection. He knows how to get you to respond emotionally to him. He gave. Now, so you're going to find out later in this trailer, these are former members speaking out and just saying, pre pre I mean, right now they're like, yeah, he started off good, but they're like, all that was a facade. They're like, man, this guy was fake. Hey, this is their story. This is this is them saying that, right? I'm, I'm getting their side because you're going to see there is silence. But let's keep playing this. Romans 8, word for word. And boy, it was impressive. The first sets of sermons had decent theological meat in them. But now he wouldn't get past a hermeneutics 101 class. Hey, how are you? Hey, David, David Platt, where are you going, David Platt? I think David Platt is weak. I think that David Platt is a coward. He is a false teacher. He is a wolf. Uh, he is a liar. We'd been lied to from the pulpit. We were lied to from David Platt. There's no doubt about it. He's in it for the money. He's a great actor. Blind spots. We all have them. David was teaching essentially CRT. And then I started thinking, am I part of the problem because I'm white? And I kept thinking. So, yeah. So they're, they're accusing him of preaching critical race theory. You know, uh, the Robin D'Angelo D'Angelo version where essentially all white people are racist. It's the air they breathe. And right. They need to give up their, you know, things they worked for, for you know, but to, to black people. Right. Because, you know, segregation and all, all this kind of stuff. Right. We've talked about that here on his channel. Uh, there's a, hey, David Platt was teaching some kind of version of that at his church. I mean, you, you had black people, white people, Asian people confirming this, right? Like, yeah, they were like, we don't accept this, right? You know, we're in Christ, Jew, Gentile, that divide has been destroyed by Christ, right? And they're saying, hey, this was actually being taught from the pulpit. Now, I knew about a lot of the woke stuff, and we're going to see something actually come up where they play. Hold on to your belts because it's going to shock you. I remember seeing this clip about a year ago, but... We'll let them keep expounding on this. Well, I must be misunderstanding because a pastor wouldn't say something wrong. Areas of our lives where we're deceived and we don't know it. Critical race theory preached from the pulpit. Critical race theory really kind of caused confusion for me. We have 106 different nations represented in McLean Bible Church. I've been there doing personal security work since 2012. I would take a bullet for anybody in that church, anybody. And you're going to turn around and say, I'm inherently racist? It's difficult for me uh, sometimes not to just torch like all white people because in What? Now, this, you may be saying, okay, who is this guy? This isn't David Platt. No, it is not David Platt, obviously. This is the guy David Platt appointed to be elder along with him. So you can see the people that David Platt are platforming and, and partnering with and, you know, laying hands on. But... This guy is literally saying he, he, he torched all white people. David Platt 
uh, right hand man, so to speak. I mean, you go to the website, he's he's listed as lead pastor alongside David Platt. Nobody else has that title except David Platt and Mike Kelsey, this gentleman right here. Come on now. Particularly white evangelicals and Christians. Mike Kelsey has been handpicked apparently by David to become the next lead pastor of McLean Bible Church. When David Platt took over the church, everything became very autocratic. Ministries were destroyed. They got rid of all of them. Nobody could give me assurances about support for the ministry. How is money being spent at this church and why are all these ministries being cut? I was seeing things that bothered me, that concerned me. They were out marching basically alongside Black Lives Matter. I want it. I want Yeah, yeah, that ain't no good. No church should be partnering with BLM, right? What they stand for. And they're anti-Christian. But a lot, I mean, there's a lot more issues that are coming, you know, that they're going to uh, allege that David Platt was into. Be a part of disciples being made and churches being multiplied all over the place. Laura asked David Platt specifically if the church was affiliated with the Southern Baptist Convention, and he never answered the question. That was an easy question. Now, what you're going to see is there's not a lot of openness. Not that actually being in the SBC is wrong. Now, I'm not SBC. I know some good faithful churches in the SBC. A lot of them aren't. And I think many of those faithful churches would say the same about the SBC. But what you're going to see from what they allege is that David Platt just refuses to kind of to be open and transparent about uh, things that are happening in the church. Very simple things. Um, you know, and I would say this, if your pastor isn't transparent about what's going on in the church, not that you need to know everything. There's some things that are private, you know, this family, what's going on with them. OK, maybe that's confidential. But church matters. We're going to see one of them. I think you should know about. But let's keep going. Just imagine leading churches to multiply churches where we live and around the world. Our Constitution says we're not allowed to affiliate outside of being an independent Bible church. They just disregarded Article 1, Section 2. We will not affiliate with any denomination. We've got to make major changes in how we give. The thing about that article is it's immutable. I had written to the Board of Elders about many of these issues. Never got a response, just like everybody else. We have a 20 plus million dollar budget. If we were actually giving the way God is calling us to give, our budget would easily be two, three times that as a church. <laughs> yeah, he's complaining about not having more than a $20 million budget, which is which is insane. That's huge. And he's like, if people actually gave, that sounds like generous giving to me. I mean, but you're going to see a lot about this. But again, you see they're contacting David Platt elders and they're not able to get a response. Now, you should be able, if you go to a church, you should be able to get a response, a meeting with your elders if you have an issue, uh, whether that's something you, issue you have with the church or an issue with yourself that you're bringing. You should be able to have a sit down with your elders. If not, they're not able to really shepherd and give watch over your soul, right? Maybe they have too many members. Maybe it's a mega church and they only have like three elders, right? Maybe that's part of the problem, but... Some of that is some of these people think they're too high to sit down with the lowly people. Just dream of all we can do. So Abby wakes me up in the middle of the night and she shows me a screenshot on her phone of McLean Bible Church's Dun and Bradstreet profile, which says that they were doing business as an SBC church. My name is John Leonard. I work for a firm called Finance and Evaluation Experts Incorporated. When we first got involved, we thought that the financial commitment between McLean Bible and the Southern Baptist was approximately $300,000, which is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but... $300,000 was not even a drop in the bucket. It turns out that it was 10 times that, maybe 20 times that. You mean I... So what they're alleging is, they're, ultimately, they're not being open and honest about their uh, financial uh, dealings. That's going to be an issue that comes up a lot in this trailer. This is, matter of fact, this is an extended trailer. Sorry if I didn't say that, but let's keep going. I could have millions of dollars if I just asked for it. Can you explain how they explained why, you know, hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars were just yeah. going from one place to another? <laughs> yeah, Chuck said, there's money flowing in all directions. He was like, it's flowing everywhere. This is the kind of boldness there is. And all right, we're going to make disciples. We're going to multiply churches. So don't we want to be a part of that here? 
They were effectively using their own parishional money to expand the Southern Baptist Convention. What if you use that $10,000 now to support a church planner? Through these plantings, the Southern Baptist Convention was able to start pushing in tendrils into the McLean Bible Church's finances, leadership, and policies. The church had been the victim of a hostile takeover by the Southern Baptist Convention. July 4th, 2021, David went up into the pulpit and said, We have explained and have in writing from the SBC, we're not a member of the Southern Baptist Convention. David Platt, we know that's all a lie. I remember when the church sent that letter out to the congregation, seeing it, and thought it was an absolute joke. There's no way that guy wrote it. Uh, it had to be somebody internal from, from McLean that wrote it. And the discovery that actually turned out to be the case. From David Platt, it would be helpful if you could send a letter to our elders and copy me clarifying that MBC is included in the SBC church database purely for the sake of accounting purposes. It was drafted by David Platt, uh, the bullet points on what to say. I just felt cheated by them because, you know, they're lying. David Platt's proxies are running everything now in the church. And it seems like there was some work done to obscure the movement of money being bundled up through the McLean Bible Church to New City Network or any of these other auxiliary organs. So it seems that the SBC involvement by this church, if I'm understanding what they're saying rightly, you know, when the documentary comes out, I'm sure it'll expound more on this, is that they leveraged partnership with the SBC kind of like, but in secret, but in reality they were to you know, bigger audience, you know, maybe some college, you know, uh, things that, that were going on, but financial motivations, you know, I mean, the SBC has got some large pockets. So it, it seems they're alleging that was some of the reasoning in part. Sometimes coming back into the McLean Bible Church and then being cut back over to the Southern Baptist Conservatives of Virginia. I saw a Speaker's Bureau advertising David Platt. His fees are ten dollars to $20,000. Man, that's a lot of money to, to speak at an event. Ten, twenty k. Um. Hey, I mean, man. One of the questions I asked was how much is in the budget for Radical? There wasn't anything for the $650,000 donation to Radical founded by David Platt. What that was for, we have no idea. Another one of those line items that just was never transparent to the congregation. How much rent is Radical? Like I said, man, if a church can't be honest about uh, the financial dealings, Man, that, that that should be open and honest where you, you know, our, our church has like a, a six month, uh, you know, members meeting where we they go. We go over the financial, uh, you know, dealings of the church. We, we know where the money's going. We know how much the pastor is getting getting paid. We know, hey, what ministries it's going to uh, future plans. We're involved in that. We can have questions. We can say, hey, we can voice our, exp our expression at our church. Now, I. I you know, you know, at a larger church, maybe that's harder to do, but at least in some kind of some some document where they know or, or, or at the very least, if they ask, you just open up. Hey, OK, yeah, this is hey, this is what we're doing. This is kind of our little you know spreadsheet here that should be made readily available to the elders or, or to, to the members. Be open about the money. They're the ones giving it paying to have offices in our building. There are too many large sums of money being floated through there. They were denying their own members access to the financial records which reflected those transactions. Raised this issue publicly, they were getting dismissed from the church. What happened to all these members? How were they purged? This happened to tons of people. Wait a second. So the people that were asking about what's going on financially were being removed essentially church discipline for asking this ain't looking good and i wondered why they're challenging so many others who oh and by the way all the people that are speaking in this film that actually claimed to went to this church were removed so <laughs> just to let you know that been likewise members these were very solid men of god and those people i respected a lot and all of a sudden they'd be gone i kind of have a long fuse but when i read this email kicking people out of the church and it was sent by the way after we'd all asked 
financial questions. David Platt had said there was a small group of people trying to take over the church. Everybody come out, let's have this uh, election. We won an election and then they redid the election. So they're going to play that clip where, you know, the small group of people trying to take over the church, they're asking about the financial honesty of what's where the, where's the money going to. That's not a takeover. That's, you know, you should be honest about that. Um, and she said something right there that I want to respond to. Let me, let me see what she said. Uh, small group of people trying to take over the church. Everybody come out. Let's have this uh, election. We won an election and then they redid the election. Oh, yeah. So they had an election over the church and <laughs> they won. And they're like, no, we're going to do it again. And surprise, they win, right? And I went into the church lobby to vote. The girl got on the phone with somebody. They said to us, somehow your account's been made inactive. She comes back and says, you're not a member. I said, excuse me, I've been a member since 1961. I. So, uh, so they're going to go through some people who got removed, but one person's literally trying to vote for these issues going on. They go, showed up to go vote, try to log in their account, I guess. I guess they have some account at their church. That's fine. And try to vote and it's like, well, you, it turns out you're no longer a member. No email, no talking to. Seems to be total blindsided by the issue he wasn't a member. I mean, the fact that he's trying to go vote. And man, a lot of these people were in leadership positions and they just got booted as soon as they started to ask questions. You should be able to ask your elders questions. Where's the money coming from? That's not a hostile takeover, small group of people trying to take over the church. <laughs> you know, they just want to know what are you doing with the money that we are giving to you? There should be no question, no, no issue at hand. I am an active leader. These are longtime members. These are the leaders of Discovering the Word. Teaching first grade boys and girls. The apologetics ministry. Men's discipleship ministry. I volunteered with special needs adults. Preparing for marriage. The praise team. Adoption, foster care. My voice has just been taken away. It was just so vibrant. They destroyed our church. We were threatened from the pulpit. Nobody better stand up or make a motion or talk or do anything. The security guy told us to stay in our seats and not disrupt. At every door into the sanctuary was a county police officer. And it felt like we were in another country under another government. I had no idea what SBC was. I didn't know that that meant the end of any control. We tried to have meetings with David Platt. We were denied. Yeah, I mean, you guys can't even talk to me for five minutes. The founders of this church would be appalled. My parents would be appalled. And my father would be sitting here in this chair instead of me. We had to bring a lawsuit against the church to get answers to the finances. In response to these lawsuits, the church spent over $1 million to prevent document disclosures and the release of financial records. So, you know, the, the people that had to leave, they had to get a discovery made to try to even see where the money's going from. Where's, where's the money going to? Where, where's it coming? Like, wh what's what's the flow of this money? And the response by the leadership of McLean Church, uh, McLean Bible Church, was to spend a million dollars to keep that stuffed out. My goodness. That must be some indicator that what is going on financially is must not be good because you wouldn't spend a million dollars unless you wanted that hidden from the uh, from the light of day. Right now, I want to non suit it, which means withdraw it, but have the right to take this information and go public with it. And that will be the victory in this case. It's an effort to speak the truth. Before David Platt is even pastor at McLean Bible Church, he is working behind the scenes to deceive our elder board. Can we trust our leaders anymore? These guys are really afraid to let the truth out. I've prayed so much about it and asked for the truth to come out, but I just can't even imagine what's behind it. There is some so they're accusing him that even before, I guess they have some kind of evidence that bef even before, I guess the public started to look shady, that he was working behind the scenes doing some shady stuff. I mean, something bigger at play going on. What are we hiding? Are they cooking the books? And you think, how, how did I miss something so obvious? This is just the beginning of the light being shown upon McLean Bible Church and David Platt. Wow. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. 
Nothing is covered up that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be made known. Therefore, whatever you have said in the dark shall be heard in the light, and what you have whispered in your private room shall be proclaimed on the housetops. Outside, this church coordinated a divisive effort to use disinformation. That was a lot to take in. So that's him saying, hey, a small group of people pretty much are lying, you know. Uh, but the real David Platt, a, a documentary coming out in 2024. Keep your eyes open to that. Matter of fact, I think there's a website called The Real David Platt. Check that out. Uh, we'll be interested to see because, uh, man, you know, even sound doctrine, right? You know, well, uh, initially David Platt, you know, it, it, it kind of it just shows you to, the need to persevere, that coming into sound doctrine does not guarantee that you will end the race well, right? And so, hey, I, I wanted to make this mainly to highlight some of these things, but also, hey, to keep an eye for this documentary. I have no partner in working with them, so this isn't a paid promotion video. This is just, hey, I, I, I care about these issues. I care about the church and the protection and the, you know, don't want wolves coming attacking the sheep. And so hopefully this video was helpful. To the next time, grace and peace. Yo, grace and peace. Thank you for watching another episode of All Things Theology. If you enjoyed what you heard today, go on and give me a like. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. I promise to give you weekly lives, videos, interactions, exposing false teachers, sharing with you, the viewer, my theological beliefs, things about the culture and the Bible. So if you're here for that, come on and join us. Also, if you would like to support this channel financially, you can do so by becoming a Patreon member or a YouTube member. Links are in the description below. You can see content before it drops. You can also have Q&A sessions with also other Patreon members, YouTube members as well. So if you would like that, hit the description link in below. Hey,